In this video, we're going to show you how to set up and connect the Rode PodMic with the Rode Rodecaster audio mixer for podcasting. This is a really popular setup, so whether you have a heap of gear in front of you and you need to know how to figure it all out, or if you're looking to buy this equipment and you just want to see how complicated it is or hear how it sounds, we hope this video will be helpful for you. Now, if you are looking for pricing or specs for anything that you see in this video, we do have some links down in the description below that will help you find the best price possible for for everything that you see here across a variety of online retailers. So we hope those links will be helpful for you. Now for the purposes of this video today, we have factory reset the Rode Rodecaster Pro, except one thing, when you go into the microphone setting here and go into audio processing, we turned all of this off because we do believe that you should be setting some other things up before any of the audio processing is turned on. Right now you are listening to the lav mic that's clipped onto my hoodie here. If you want, you can take a look at the logo up in the top corner. When you're listening to the Rode Pod mic, you'll see a logo of the Rode Pod mic. Right now, obviously you see a logo of the lav mic because that's what you're listening to. First thing we're gonna do is we're gonna put on our headphones. While we're talking about headphones, there are kind of three different ways to do it. Some people like podcasting without headphones, and then if you're organizing the podcast, you can just watch the meters on the Rodecaster Pro. Some people like closed back headphones like I'm using right now. This prevents the microphone from hearing the headphones. It can be a little bit better for audio reasons. Some people prefer open back headphones because they're lighter weight, they're cooler. These things can get hot after a while. So it really comes down to personal preference. We do have some links again down in the description if you are looking for headphones. Next for the Rode Pod mic, we believe it sounds much, much better with a pop filter on it. So I'm gonna put that on now. Next, we wanna make sure that the mic positioning of this microphone is set up correctly before we do anything else. And that means having it within about a fist of my mouth. The camera angle here can make it look a little further away than it is, but it is within a fist of my mouth or at least a fist within my chin. And then we're gonna connect the XLR output from the Rode Pod mic to the input of channel one on the Rodecaster Pro. For this, we're gonna use a Canary Starquad XLR cable. We believe these are the best quality cables that you can get that are still colored and they have black connectors on them, which I like the nitric connectors. And you connect that. Now I'm going to hit record on the audio mixer so you can hear everything I'm doing as we get the Rode Pod mic up and going. Next, I'm going to bring this fader up to this dark hash mark about just above halfway up. There's no master fader or master volume on the Rodecaster Pro. So as soon as you start turning up the individual channels, you start to get level and you can see that here on the meters. We're gonna ignore this for a second here. The reason that we start about two thirds the way up is because we want a good level of audio, but we also want some headroom. It would be a mistake to set up all your audio when you're set up at 10 out of 10 on this fader here. You would have no headroom throughout your podcast. If you start your podcast like this with everybody turned up, what happens when one person's quiet? Well, you run out of headroom there. That's why we recommend that you set everybody up with it at this hash mark here, this darker line. I think that's a better approach to getting everything going. Next, we're going to click number one here. We're going to go back. We're going to select microphone. We're going to select the Rode Pod mic. Next, we're going to go to level. You can see here at level 35 that we're kind of entering the sweet spot of what it's recommending. One thing that you really want to be careful of with the Rodecaster Pro is you don't want to get caught turning this level up plus 40. I'm going to turn it all the way up to 50 now and see if you can hear the difference in the sound quality just with me not speaking when I turn this all the way up to 50. So if you had your headphones on, you would notice that after 40, it starts to get really hissy. Or after 40, it gets hissy, but after 45, it gets really hissy. So we want to stay really out of that area. That amount of hiss will ruin your podcast. It'll be way too distracting for people to listen to. My personal recommendation is that you don't go over 40. That being said here, I think with about 38, 39 for my voice, with this mic positioning, I think we're in a really good spot here for level. Now, 
if you are very soft spoken, I'm going to show you how to use a cloud lifter really quickly. I think 95% of people won't need one with the Rode pod mic. I think it's wholly unnecessary, but I'm going to show you how to set it up just in case you're unable to get up into this sweet spot without going all the way up to 40. So I'm going to disconnect this. Next, I'm going to connect my microphone, the Rode pod mic to the cloud lifter. There are many different versions of a cloud lifter. They're called inline preamps. There's a whole pile of different ones from different brands. The cloud lifter is on the more expensive end. It's just the one that I have here, but you can get cheaper, more affordable ones as well. We, we're gonna put some links down in the description to make sure that you have some options. So we connect the microphone to the cloud lifter. Basically how the cloud lifter works is it takes phantom power from the audio mixer, and then it'll give you 25 decibels of clean gain. So it's kind of like a second preamp. That's why I call it an inline preamp, because it's in line with the XLR cable. Connect another XLR cable to come out of this. So you can see the white cable goes into the cloud lifter, and then the blue cable comes out. We're gonna put this back into channel one. Now you can see here, we no longer have level. Again, this isn't for everybody. I'm just doing it to demonstrate. But to get the cloud lifter working, you need to turn on phantom power. So there's two ways. You can turn on phantom power here, and already you can see that we have way more level. So that's really awesome. But I'm gonna turn that off to show you a second way. We can come back, select microphone, and select condenser. We go back, back to level, and that also turned on phantom power. So there's two different ways to turn it on. Next, we're gonna turn this level up. We're gonna try something like 27, 28, 29, maybe let's try 30, 31. And here you can see, so we're about 10 points lower than we were before to get the same amount of level. So the preamp inside of the Rodecaster Pro is not working as hard. That's the whole point of an inline preamp is to take some of the heavy lifting off of the Rodecaster Pro. I think most people will be fine turning the level up to 40 with the Rode pod mic, but if you can't get the level you need up into this sweet spot, try this, try the steps in this video with a cloud lifter or other inline preamp. I think that'll be helpful for you. Now that we have the level set up, we're gonna go back, we're gonna to go to audio processing. And here we have a whole pile of different options. Let's quickly go through them and you'll hear them as I demo them here. First, we have the compressor. The compressor will narrow the dynamic range of the microphone. It'll squeeze it into a tighter window. You can think of it almost as an auto mixer. If you're really dynamic and you're laughing all the time or you're getting loud, quiet, loud, quiet, it'll save you from having to turn the faders up and down, up and down, up and down. It basically squeezes the microphone into a more narrow window so you can leave the fader where it is and it'll kind of take care of itself. So I'm gonna turn that on now. Next, we have the high pass filter. For the Rode pod mic, I don't really recommend using the high pass filter. It kind of has that built into its EQ frequency response. But basically what a high pass filter does is it rolls off the lower frequencies and the objective is to take the microphone out of the subwoofer of the listener. It's generally recommended for every vocal mic, but I think the Rode Podcaster, like I said, it's unnecessary with this microphone. You don't want a microphone in the subwoofer of your listener. You gotta remember a lot of people listen to podcasts driving their car. There's just no usable frequencies and there's no reason to cause a low rumble from a podcast or anything like that. It's a little bit overdone. So I generally recommend it for most mics. I don't recommend it for the Rode Pod mic. Next, we have the de -esser. That's exactly what it sounds like. It will kind of get rid of the S sounds of your guest. So if they're really sibilant or they have a lot of mouth noise or something like that, you can turn that on. I like having it on. Next, we have the noise gate. Basically what the noise gate does is it will automatically mute and unmute your microphone when you're not speaking. As soon as you start speaking, you exceed the threshold and the microphone unmutes. This is really good if you have multiple guests on a podcast, but it's not as helpful if you're doing a talking head video or a one person podcast like I'm doing right now, it's just a little bit distracting. You can hear the noise gate clicking in and out. And if you don't have another guest speaking at the time, it can be a little bit distracting. I'll turn it on so you can hear it. So here's what it sounds like. You'll notice that there's just a really subtle click where you, the preamp noise goes away when I stop speaking and gets dead quiet a little bit more distracting than I like, so I'm going to leave it off for right now. Next, we have the Oral Exciter. This is, again, something that I wouldn't recommend using on every guest, 
But if you think that there's a guest that really just sounds muddy or they're not popping or they're not shining through and they just kind of sound blah, then you can turn this on. It will turn up or kind of excite the upper frequencies of the microphone. It can be grating if you use it on somebody that already has a strong kind of presence in these higher frequencies. It can be overdone. So you don't want to use it on anybody. But if somebody's really muddy and kind of boring, if you find yourself getting bored when they speak, you might want to consider that. Next, we have the big bottom. This is something that I would recommend as a general recommendation for the Rode pod mic because it is kind of weak down in those low frequencies. This will fatten up the microphone a little bit, give it more presence. It is something that I recommend. Now, this is the opposite of a high pass filter. A high pass filter will kind of roll off the low frequencies. The big bottom pushes them in. So there's no sense turning the big bottom on. If you also have the high pass filter, those two things will conflict. So in this case with the Rode pod mic, I generally recommend no high pass filter, but you can turn on the big bottom if you want to add a little bit of boost of those lower frequencies. I'm going to turn it off right for now. Next, we have some voice options here. In the tone, you can kind of calibrate the EQ of the microphone with some easy EQ settings. So if you have a deep voice, if you have medium voice, or you have a high, high voice, there's some subtle EQ changes going on here. Next, for strength, my belief of what this is doing here is it's kind of calibrating the compressor. So if you're really soft-spoken, it's going to give you a little bit more makeup gain. Or if you're really strong, it's going to increase the attack and the compression ratio and the threshold of the compressor in order to kind of squeeze your dynamics into where they need to be. So you can use that if somebody's, you know, too soft or they need to be kind of taken down a notch. And that's really all there is to setting up the Rode pod mic with the Rodecaster Pro. You would go through and do the same steps for all your other channels. It is important that you do not copy paste from guest to guest to guest to guest. Everybody needs kind of like their 30 second sound check to set them up and find the right settings for them. But you can use the general rules in here in this video as a starting point. It's pretty simple just to go through the four options in the menu in the wizard in the Rodecaster Pro. Again, if you are price shopping, we have some links that'll help you find the best price on some of this stuff from a variety of online retailers. Just check out the links down in the description below. If you have any questions that we didn't answer in this video, please leave a comment down in the comment section below. And if you want to see more videos like this in the future, please like and subscribe. Thank you for watching.